for the pilot in the F-35, the most fascinating part is wearing this helmet. All the information we need to fly is presented on the screen in front of the pilot's eyes. But we also feed in imagery from cameras that are embedded in the skin of the airplane. It allows us to see underneath us as if the airplane wasn't even there. It's absolutely astonishing to have this capability for the pilot in the F-35. Day four for Arm Recognition Editorial Team at DSCI 2017. During four days, London is the center of the world for defense and security industry, showing latest innovation and technologies. us here for the potential uh, UK mechanized infantry vehicle program. Um, the Boxer, as you well know, um, started life as a multinational program with the, the UK government um, as part of the program for a number of years. Um, we believe it's a, it's a really good solution for the UK MIV requirement. Um, and as you can see, we've, um, we've painted it in some very interesting colors to show that. Um, so Boxer's, um, we believe, the preeminent 8x8 vehicle on the market at the moment. Um, it's extremely well protected uh, and we've learned through our experience in Afghanistan and Iraq that protection is an absolute key element. Um, in addition, it's very agile on the battlefield, great power to weight ratio um, and its modularity is absolutely key. So there's a mission module on the back and a drive module. The mission module is different variants, so you might have an ambulance, a command post, an armoured personnel carrier and you can take those mission modules off and swap the vehicle over if the drive module for some reason has a failure, you can swap the mission modules. You can take the mission modules off and use them independently if you want to do that as well. At the moment the Boxer is in service with the, the Germans and also with the Dutch. They both have a range of mission modules. Uh, Lithuania has also bought the vehicle and has also mission modules. So there's a choice for the, for the British. Um, if we go down this route, we can reuse the current mission modules, we can modify them, and of course we can develop our own for the UK for specific requirements. And that may be anything, that could be a mortar, um, it could even be an artillery piece. Um, it has that flexibility. And instead of having to buy a new vehicle every time, you just design the mission module. We are very proud to present to you the IDZES soldier system, which is the soldier system of the German army. And in addition, uh, the new version, the Gladius 2.0 uh, soldier system. This is a product launch on DSEI for that system. It's a fielded, tested and combat proven uh, soldier system. The German uh, soldiers are very happy. Um, it's um, a complete system approach. Um, so everything belongs to the system, clothing, protection, weapons, uh, sensors. But the main focus of the German army is uh, to connect soldiers. So the command and control aspect is very, very important. Flexibility and modularity is very important and therefore we offer three different levels. The light version is an entry point for customers and it's basically only a radio with a headset but you can use it for voice and data communication. So that's the first point where you give the possibility of a network, solutions and connecting soldiers on the very first level. In addition to that, we offer a basic variant for a squad leader, for example. Here we have again a radio, we have a display, including computer, to get tactical information. And of course, you have to connect that. We have a hub to do that, and this is a basic variant. The advanced variant offers us even more possibilities. You can, for example, get a bigger display. You can uh, take a second radio into the system to have also a long distance communication. It's a VHF radio. You can uh, 
integrate, for example, an acoustic sniper location system that gives you exactly the position of an attacking sniper. You can also um, integrate the micro drone to have a uh, reconnaissance asset on the very lower infantry level. And what we believe is the next future trend, the head system. We believe that it's absolutely necessary to get hands-free access on tactical information. Therefore, we offer different options to get this tactical information, daytime displays, look-through displays, or even solutions for nighttime operations where you get a display into the uh, night vision goggles to have also access on tactical information. Uh, my name is uh, Niels Holt. Um, I'm uh, the inventor of this technology. This is really the first time we show it here. And um, yeah, what we want to do is that we uh, have our insert plates, uh, and in this plate there's a ceramic, and there's always a problem that uh, the cracks can be inside the ceramic after a drop on the ground or something like this, and nobody knows is this plate uh, okay or it's not okay. So uh, the customer wants to know. Uh, if we had to replace it and uh, the normal way to do is, it is uh, to do it by x-ray. So by x-ray you can find the crack and uh, but this is very cost and time intensive so we have a new technology put it in an in, uh, insert. This is a normal insert we put a box on the top with a sensor system then uh, the soldier do it like uh, he ever do it with this plate and uh, when we connect it uh, to our measurement device with a real fast uh, bayonet lock, we can make a measurement. Now I start uh, our uh, measurement device. We can connect to the plate. We see some uh, information like the serial number. Then we make the measurement. It took something like a second. And then we have the result for our customer. So it's very easy to use. So every soldier uh, can do it by his own. My name is uh, Loïc Codenet, I am a marketing director of uh, Eurenco for explosive and uh, propellants. Uh, we are the European leader in explosive propellants and combustible items for uh, ammunition. We have developed uh, two new uh, propellants for large caliber ammunition, high performance ammunition, like uh, 120 mm armor piercing fin stabilized discharging sabot, and also 155 mm artillery. Those two propellants have high performance and are also very competitive. We have designed those two propellants in our excellent center in Sweden, in Karlskoga. And those propellants are targeting the application of modular charges for artillery and tank ammunition. Those two propellants are designed to increase the performance of those ammunition. The new product Compen5 was uh, developed because um, of a small gap between existing product line or between products and uh, the new Compen5 fills that gap. It is a comp series site with the well-known famous comp series features transferred into a compact micro size. The Compen5 main characteristics are two MOA dots mechanical switch of 10 intensities compatible with night vision devices. Four positions of the intensity are for night vision device use and remaining six are for daylight. It runs on AAA battery. It runs for five years continuous use. All of the endpoint sites can be mounted on any type of or any weapon platform and we also offer additional optical devices which enhance the capability of the operator. And briefly going through them, we have magnification units, three times magnifier, six times magnifier, and the concealed engagement unit or the CEU. Different mount of options are available for the magnification units. You have the fixed twist mount on off and you have the new flip mount which is works exactly like the twist mount with the added feature of flipping the magnifier to the side 
allowing the operator to quickly transform from magnified to non-magnified mode. The product is called the Spear. Spear is a 120 millimeters recoiling mortar system that was specifically designed to be installed on light vehicles. This is the first 120 millimeter in the world that can be installed on a 4x4 vehicle like the one that you see here. So a variety of 4x4 vehicles uh, of similar size uh, could uh, be uh, using the uh, spear for the first time. Up until now, the maximum size of mortar that could be installed on such a vehicle was 81 millimeters. This uh, system, with an improved recoiling mechanism, allows the user to have the 120 millimeter fire power on a light vehicle. The crew could uh, consist of uh, three persons. The system could be operated with two persons as well. Uh, two of them are usually on the uh, back of the vehicle. Uh, the uh, uh, system that you see here can shoot seven to eight kilometers range and is being loaded manually while the fire control system is inside. Uh, we have a, a long range system with a longer barrel that can reach 10 kilometers with regular ammunition and in there we are using semi-automatic uh, loading system. First of all, the system is derived from the uh, a car dome 120 millimeter system that was sold in Israel and of course all over the world. Uh, the US uh, uh, Army is using it and many other customers. This specific new system is already uh, uh, in use or sold to a few new customers, not only Israel, naturally. Uh, the system that you see here can shoot between 15 and 20 shells per projectiles per minute. I represent DPM, Drone Division, and uh, we believe that we can get the 184 personal flying vehicle uh, commercially available in the UK um, within the next five to ten years. But we also believe that there's a military opportunity to use this product uh, for emergency evacuation of, of casualties from the front line and, um, and, and maybe also uh, goods supplies the last mile to the front line. So we're very proud to be uh, representing this. It is an automatic aerial vehicle um, and it is basically a manned drone, although the Civil Aviation Authority would not like us to say that. Um, but basically it's a man drone and it is that sort of technology. The actual software and um, the controls behind this though are their own. There is, you know, they're developed by eHang and it's actually been pioneered and developed to be the safest um, aerial vehicle of its kind anywhere. It has multiple redundancies and, and, and such like. So. I mean these are carbon fibre props, um, as you can see there's eight of them. Um, so. Um, redundancy purposes if four motors go down or four props fail for some reason then in theory the the vehicle can still fly um, being separate motors is, is it makes it a safer vehicle um, carbon fiber of course very light 14.4 um, kilowatt motors on there and uh, give it about 25 minutes of flight time maximum speed is 100 kilometers an hour